Let's play a game of Will It Turn On? <laughs> If I flick any of these levers, will the redstone light turn on? Yes, any of them will power the light. Round 2. Will any of these levers make the light turn on? No, because glass is a transparent block and it cannot conduct redstone power. Will any of these turn the piston on? Well, the answer should be no, since there are glass blocks, but... Ah. Why does that happen? This is an iron door, and it's also the first redstone component that Marcus, the originator of Minecraft, added to the game. And it works, as you may know, by activating when any block next to any of the two door blocks gets activated. The origin of quasi-connectivity comes from Marcus' reuse of this code when he made the next redstone components, like pistons and droppers and dispensers. Basically, if you replace the door blocks with pistons, it starts working a bit weirdly. So parts of it work as if it was a door, like these do not activate anything. Uh, these activate both blocks, and these only activate the bottom block. The legacy of the door code means that for pistons, if they have any block above them that gets powered, in this case, weakly powered by this lever, for example, they are also considered powered. There is a second part of this that we'll go into in a second. And this with the block above also explains why these only activate the lower piston because it only works downwards. So in this case, these only power this piston. If there was another piston below this one, that would have been considered to be activated when we did this, but not this one because it's above. The second weirdness about this is, if I do this, it seemingly no longer works. But if we leave it on and then do any kind of block update next to the piston, all of a sudden it realizes it's powered or unpowered, depending on the current state of the quasi-connection. The reason it doesn't work when we flick the lever in the first place is this. This is a lever, it is powering this block, which in turn is weakly powering the blocks around it. I'll go into strongly and weakly powered blocks in another video, but in short it means that strongly powered blocks can weakly power blocks around them, whilst weakly powered blocks cannot power anything around them. So in this case we are powering the space above this piston, but the piston doesn't react because of the range of these green wool blocks. The green wool box symbolizes the activation range of the lever. So when I flick this lever, it causes block updates up to two blocks away by taxicab distance, so one, two, or one, two, or one, two. And it also goes in all directions. But as you can see, that activation is outside of the range of this piston. So this piston doesn't get updated. If we cause another block update, that will make the piston realize that it should be powered through the quasi-connectivity or unpowered. So if you have another block that gets strongly powered by something that is also in the activation range of the piston, so in this case we're strongly powering this block, which is weakly powering the blocks around it, which means this block is theoretically powered, and also inside of the activation range so that this piston gets a block update, then it works immediately. But if we instead move the powering away from the activation range, it is actually powered, but it will not react unless you give it an additional block update. This is called budding or bud powering, and bud stands for block update detector, which, I mean, it's reasonable, right? Like we've powered this, nothing happens, and if any block update happens, it reacts, so you can do something in response of block updates. And if you're a recent Minecraft user, you might think, what good are block updates? But this is actually so useful that Mojang added a specific component for it, the Observer. The Observer is a dedicated block update detector. It's a one block bud, basically. Before we had Observers, you needed bud switches to do the job of Observers, and they were usually quite large. I think the smallest one you can build is this. This is it's a small bud where you can get power of the redstone block when it's up, when something happens. 
and it reacts to lots of different block updates. So that's where some of the confusion in terms comes from. Like this is called a budded piston because they were used in bud switches uh, or it's a bud powered piston because you know it's it's powered and budded. But the powering itself is basically quasi connectivity and the bud term comes from the block update detection nature of this state that you can use it as a block update detector. This doesn't only work with pistons. Marcus's code reuse extends to pistons, both kinds, and droppers and dispensers. So you can basically use this phenomenon for all four of these components. It's sometimes a nuisance because you're powering things that you normally wouldn't think of powering. Like if you power something that would power this block, you're actually powering the piston or dispenser or dropper underneath. But it can also be very useful for things like piston doors. This only works because of quasi-connectivity. You're powering this block and this block is then considered powered. So it extends because the redstone dust's activation range is two blocks below it and includes this block. And since this block is updated, this one is also updated. And since this is powered, this is considered powered. So that's strongly powered and this is weakly powered. And since this is weakly powered, then by QC, this is also powered. So these compact piston doors is thanks to quasi-connectivity. You can also do things like instant activation lines for world eaters are usually built using quasi-connectivity. Basically, you have long lines of budded pistons and redstone blocks. And if you cause a block update in one end, all of them will update instantly, which means you can launch an armada of flying machines across hundreds of blocks instantly. And they're also useful for making things more compact, like piston walls, or in this case, piston doors. That's a brief introduction to uh, quasi-connectivity and bud powering. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that the analogy of the iron door helped you as much as it's helped me. I have to thank Cubic Meter for that. He's the one that I first heard use this explanation for quasi-connectivity in one of his videos. Unfortunately, I couldn't find exactly which video, otherwise I would have linked it. But shout out to Cubic Meter anyway, because he makes awesome redstone videos. So, hope you enjoyed it and have a look at the technical videos playlist if you want more like this. And next time I'll do a video on the strong and weak powering of blocks. See you then.